Hello and welcome to That's a Wrap. My name is Anthony Gentry, and joining me today is... Austin Jameson. Hello. Hello. Yeah. How are you doing today, Austin? I'm pretty good. Yeah. We're, uh, we're approaching finals week here at our uh, semest- uh, yes. semester here. It's so. uh, it's pretty stressful. Yes. Uh, it's got us all on edge, <laughs> yeah. kind of. Very much so. Um, But that's not going to stop us from talking about our movies. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, or real quick, what's the, what are we talking about today? Today, we are talking about... Seasons Beatings, nice. Violent Night, mm-hmm. um, the new David Harbour Santa movie where he beats up a lot of criminals yeah. in violent fashion, as the name says. Yeah. Um, but before we get into that, mm-hmm. we have six trailers to talk Ooh. about and one mini movie review because okay. I keep forgetting we have our <laughs> Bytes format. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. Um, so let's get into real quick. Do you want to test the sound? Like play it back and make sure. I already did. Okay. Yeah. We'll cut that out. Okay. (laughs) Our first trailer is Mm -hmm. a movie in a franchise that I particularly do not care about. The last movie I thought was good. Mm -hmm. Let's see what happens with this one. Okay. It is Transformers: right. Rise of the Beasts. I feel like I've seen this movie before. <laughs> oh, which, which one was it? Transformers one, two. That's a great uh, question. <laughs> Dark of, of the them. Moon. There's already one with like dinosaurs. Yeah. So, uh, animal robots is not something that's like a, a tech, like a unique idea for Transform. I don't know it. It's a Transformers movie. Yeah. Do you have any like nostalgia for Transformers? Yes. You absolutely. Do? Okay. Um. For There's me, either... like, I, I never grew up with, like, the, like, I had some of the toys, which I thought were, like, really cool, but I never watched any of the movies or the TV shows. I just have good memories of the toys, mm-hmm. so I'm not, like, super attached to the Transformers <laughs> as, like, a lot of people are. Right. Uh, for, like, all the, probably the first four movies I definitely saw in theaters with my mm-hmm. parents. Because, um, like, as a kid, it's just, like, super awesome giant robots fighting yeah. explosions. Shia LaBeouf. You got everything. Um, Shia LaBeouf, yeah. And I think I only watched the third one in theaters. Gotcha. And even then, my little movie critic mm-hmm. um, knew that this was not a good movie. Mm-hmm. And so I just looked up at the ceiling the whole time and I think fell asleep. And then you're missing out. Uh, well, I was eight. <laughs> action-wise, these these movies do, like, they're Michael Bay. They, they, do, they do bring the action. Yeah. Um, but that's about all they bring. Yeah. Have um, you seen Bubblebee? I do don't think so actually bumblebee was actually pretty good i really like that Mm -hmm. and i think it's because (laughs) they did have action but they also mainly focused on the characters and they actually told a story Ah, um michael Mm. bay didn't direct that one so i think that's a good indicator he's not directing this one either Hmm. which gives me like some hope for it Mm -hmm. um obviously i haven't seen all the like michael bay transformers movies but what i've have seen of them cool action nothing much else it's mainly just bland stuff mm-hmm. um i'm not super excited for this movie yeah. um it, it gave you what you expected from a transformers trailer which is big robots big robots transforming fighting yeah Optimus fighting. prime in there yeah he, he has a cool design i thought yeah. i like that he, i think he's looking more classic i, I like so the too. cartoons more boxy instead yeah. of just like bulky humanoid uh which is fun but again no it's Wahlberg. transformers so no mark Wahlberg. No Shia LaBeouf, as far as we no. know. Michelle um, Yeoh is going to be in it as a Transformer. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and Peter Dinklage. Pete Davidson is going to be oh. a Transformer. Uh, oh. I can't wait for this movie now. Um, I can. <laughs> it's going to be directed by Stephen Cable Jr., who did Creed Two, which I, okay. I love that movie. Mm-hmm. So, who knows? It could be good. Uh, yeah, it comes out June 9th. So, maybe mm-hmm. we'll review it. Maybe not. Who yeah. knows? Um, but yeah, let's move on because we have a lot of stuff yes, to talk about. Um, our next trailer came mm-hmm. in same day as Transformers. We had a huge day for trailers, and that is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume yes. Three. Um, last film in like the Guardians trilogy, James Gunn is like really pushing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think of the trailer? This looked really bland. Yeah, um, like. I thought the Ant Man trailer looked more interesting than like, or at least visually interesting, because that's what Guardians really has going for it. Yeah, because there's not a lot of rules that it has to follow. It's just it, it's in space, and James Gunn gets to invent whatever he wants, like within guidelines of the rules or the universe or whatever. But like after seeing the holiday special, 
Um, Which was good. It really wasn't. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I'm not like excited for whatever's going to happen in this one. It looks they are they already have the dumb Drax jokes. I liked the trailer. I did not. I I thought it was like as someone who did not like Volume Two mm-hmm. at all. It seems like they're pulling back on that bad humor that was in it. And did you see the first Drax joke in it? Yeah, when he hits the kid. Yeah, that was funny. I guess was, he just throws the ball and then. The ball hits him, and he's like, hey. Like, that was Yeah, it's it was Billy stupid. Madison humor. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, for sure. But I still laughed at it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I I have hopes Not on this one. Madison, I think I because of, like, the Suicide Squad and Peacemaker with, like, James Gunn's, like, recent stuff, it, it's ha- it has me with high hopes for this, especially with this being, like, the final hurrah for these characters. Mm-hmm. Do you th- Who do you think is going to die in this one? Because I think James Gunn has confirmed, like, someone's going to die. We just don't know yet. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't really care. Yeah? You don't? <laughs> like, I mean, you are out of it for Marvel I, for, now. I don't. Like, it's it's just, uh, like, I won't, I won't go as far to call it obnoxious, but it, like, it, it's, it has a presence in the Hollywood industry right now where it's, like, slowly fading and it, the embers are just fading away. Yeah. Um, I don't know. The, the the trailer makes it seem like it's all about Rocket. Um, it does. I yeah. don't think he has the gall to kill Rocket, uh, especially after all that Rocket has already been through with Groot and I losing. I think he's going to kill Drax. I think that's the one who's going to eat it. And and who cares? Because he makes him the dumb oaf. Nobody yeah. does, nobody cares about Drax anymore. And it's like he he was a good character in, in the first Guardians, and the second one they just went in too hard and oh look he's dumb, mm-hmm. and now that's all he is. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know why, but I'm having hopes for this that they're gonna turn it around, and they're gonna write the shit. I, I don't think they will. No. Uh, I think they'll kill Gamora again. Um, <laughs> that or like, cause Star Lord's gonna have to have his happy ending. Yeah. Mantis is Mantis. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Drax is just the Drax is the easiest to kill because he has no connections to anybody mm-hmm. except for the crew. Um. Groot has already died. Uh, <laughs> Rocket has already been through a lot of trauma, um, but he could die. But he has like some he like relationship yeah. with like a w- otter or a weasel or something. Yeah, that in was this one. That was um, interesting. I guess it's gonna be about it's gonna be his story more than anything. Yeah, uh, they killed like Yondu in the last one, and so it's like <sighs> nothing feels meaningful anymore. I don't care about well, these characters. We'll find out if it really isn't meaningful <laughs> on May fifth, twenty twenty three. Yeah, we will. Probably that that might be our finale for it might be yeah we'll see how that lines up, but anyway let's move on to mm-hmm. our third trailer, another big trailer that came out that same day, and I don't think I would have been quite as excited for this if I hadn't seen the entire franchise right. <laughs> like just a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. and that is Indiana Jones Five and the Dial of Destiny. Okay, Austin. Have you seen any Indiana Jones film? As a kid, yes. I have no memory of them. However, I did yes. 100% Lego Indiana Jones as a child. Yeah, of course. So While I was watching yeah. all the Indiana Jones movies, I was like, oh yeah, I know this part. I played yeah. in the Lego game. Exactly. Um, let's talk once again about legacy sequels. Yes. This one kind of gets off the break because there's already four of them. Uh, and it's like, it was kind of inevitable that them getting Harrison Ford back somehow... Um, well, Harrison probably with Ford, a, he loves a, Indiana Jones. Does he? Yeah. Okay, like, well, more than he, Han Solo, that's he hates. Sure. Yeah, he hates Han Solo, but he loves Indiana Jones, even though they're, like, the exact same character. Uh-huh. But, so I don't think it took a lot of convincing for him to come back. Mm-hmm. I don't know. This is one of the trailers uh, in my normal uh, preparedness yeah. that I had to watch in two times speed. Of course. Um and it looks okay. It, it felt like an Indiana Jones mo- movie. It, it did. It felt. Yeah. I like the music. Obviously, um, it's nice to yeah, have John Williams. Him his popping off final again. movie score. We'll see. That's gonna be sad. We'll see. Uh, I okay. He's like ninety five. He's <laughs> got this. He he'll stick it out for one more Star Wars or yeah. something. I don't know. Okay. Um. Well, absolutely not going to after saying that. I don't. <laughs> I do not like that being recorded. Um. John Williams, please come on the show right now. I 110 like, years old. I, John Williams <laughs> is coming back for Star Wars 15. Yeah, uh, but the music is great. 
the trailer looks pretty good. I really liked this trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I, like I said, I just watched the entire franchise, and it brought me back to like two weeks ago mm-hmm. when I watched the last two of them. And um, the director of it is going to be James Mangold, who did Logan. Ooh. And yeah, okay. exactly. Um, and it it just looks like classic indie. It looks like they're moving, even though they there's a lot of CGI with like his face with the de aging stuff. Yeah, but like that's going in the past. So it what I'm saying is it looks like they're moving into the more practical stuff that they did in the original trilogy mm-hmm. than <laughs> Kingdom of the Crystal Skull with everything being CG. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. All the action scenes looked really fun, like with him on horseback going against the train. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that last bit with him with the whip, like trying to get everyone to get back, and then yeah. they all pull out a gun. It just feels like classic indie, and I'm really excited about that. Do you think they're going to bring back Short Round after he's popped back into the industry with everything everywhere all at once? Honestly, I hope so. That'd be wonderful. Short Round was amazing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I really hope they do that. This movie comes out June 30th. Next yeah, we'll probably year. end up. Well, I don't want to submit anything, but we do have our summer season to look. I'm going to push for this to like review yeah. this. This looks so good. Mm-hmm. I I can't wait for it. Mm-hmm. Um, our next trailer yes. is it is a um a movie starring Chris Pratt, who would have known, ah. and that is the Super Mario movie. Yeah, we got our second trailer. Or this is the is this the first? It's the first like official trailer. The other one was like a teaser, but that's fair. Yeah, um, everything in this movie looks great except for Chris Pratt. Um, yeah, I'm still adapting to a lot of the voices. Um, I well, Chris Pratt. This trailer did not do any justices for. It. Um, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's Wahoo. Um, the Wahoo was good. Wahoo was pretty good. Um, I like that. That's what. Our, our show boils down to now. It's like, mm, Wahoo, I give that an 8 out of 10. The let's a go, mm, mm, probably like a 4 or <laughs> 3. Like, that was like him trying to hype himself up, like, okay, yeah. let's a go. Like it was the beginning of Cars with <laughs> Owen Wilson. Yeah, speed. speed. I am speed. Yeah, it's it's weird. Uh, it, it doesn't work super well. I think they'll get away with it because it just it's going to feel like an animated illumination yeah. movie. Honestly, like it feels like Illumination is bringing it with this one, mm-hmm. whereas with all their other movies, it seems like they're kind of being lazy with it. They're not really like pushing themselves in terms of just doing sequels to mm-hmm. everything. But with this, it's like a different animation style. It seems like yeah. they're actually putting forth their best effort with this one, yeah. and I, I'm yeah. really excited for it now. Like. Mm-hmm. With the Mario Kart sequence, I didn't think they were going to do that. That yeah. was really cool. Jack Black looks like he's going to have a blast with this. Literally. Charlie Day as the Ouija. Yeah. Amazing casting. That that felt like it was going to land whenever they announced it at the Direct. Yeah. Uh, they're still cowards and haven't shown us Seth Rogen. Um, I know. His character they had Donkey, Donkey Kong. Kong in it, but he didn't say anything. I thought they were going to drop the laugh there, but they're, they're holding I off was on us they would. a little bit. Um yeah, I agree. I think visually the animation is like super duper yeah. impressive. Oh, and Anya Taylor Joy as Peach, she looks yeah. cool. Yeah, or I like that she's not just going to be immediately captured like a regular it's, Mario it's, game. It's, I like how it's Luigi being captured. <laughs> yes, uh, I think that'll work well. I look forward to the inevitable Luigi's Mansion sequels. Yes. Or did you see in the trailer is, he has the backpack from he? Luigi's Mansion? Sick. So I I wonder if that's how they're going to get him. It's like know. he's like catching ghosts, mm-hmm. and then he's like, it's a trap. I hope so. I, I don't know. There's a lot they can play with here because they have a lot of source yeah. material so far. But that being said, we'll see how well it actually plans out with, yeah, we'll see. one, the performance, and two, the story. Because, I mean, it is just going to be a hero's journey, of, but is. with Mario. Um, I don't know. I, I think it looks good. I, with every trailer that comes out, my excitement grows. Mm-hmm. And, so, and that's a good thing. It's coming out April 7th, 2023. So we yeah. will for sure be reviewing that next semester. It was very close to my birthday. Another, Ooh, gr- I got Sonic last birthday. year. I got the Sonic, the first Sonic two years before that for my birthday. Yeah, you did. I'm popping off with these. I'm going to get Mario and Son- Sonic I'm the Olympic Creed Games for my the movie. Birthday. True. That's true. Yeah. They're spoiling us. Um, yeah, our, our next trailer. We're still not done with trailers. Yeah. Our next trailer is not a movie, but a TV show. Yes. That is based on one of the most like acclaimed video games ever yeah. i think maybe the most 
Um, it's up there. That's The Last of Us. Mm-hmm. Austin. Yes. What did you think of this trailer? Uh, this was another two times speed one for me, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh no. Um, so I, I didn't really get a good read on the performances. Yeah, and like the pacing of it all. Yeah, and... Visually, it looked good. Um, <laughs> I remain skeptical. I don't think any video game, like, movie adaptation, like, is going to pan out until I see it and That's agree fair. with it. Um, what was your take on their use of "Take on Me"? Did they use "Take on Me"? Yeah. Oh wow, I, you really I did. I couldn't hear it. Yeah. They they used "Take on Me" for the soundtrack, like for the uh, trailer. Honestly, yeah, I lo- I thought that at first, but then it fit perfectly, especially if you played the second game. I'll have to watch it again. Uh, and I did not play the second game, so I don't know what that entails. But uh, interesting. I I love this trailer. Um, mm-hmm. it, this is like a day for good trailers. I gotta say. Um, yeah. It's nice. Pedro Pascal looks like he's going to kill it as Joel. Yeah. I wasn't super sure about Bella Ramsey as Ellie. Mm -hmm. And then just that one moment of her acting like a zombie, it just sold me immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, They they put in so many hints of, like, things that happened in the game, like the winter segment. Yeah. And just other things that we don't want to say in case you haven't played the game. But it looks like this show is ramping up to be, like, great and maybe Mm -hmm. match up to the game. Yeah, we'll see. I remain I, until I see it. I remain unconvinced. We're just a little over a month away from it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting right. Uh, we're I'm getting right up that. on it. And our last trailer mm-hmm. is most likely the biggest uh, movie we have coming out in for a few months. Um, right. Okay. Yeah, that is. Uh, it's gonna be like a serious. Looks like yeah. Oscar drama. Mm-hmm. Um, but also with like a big budget with like all these great stars yeah. and everything. It's like kind of like intimidating almost because we haven't yeah. seen a blockbuster like this since like probably the first. Yeah, Avatar. I don't know how we're gonna be able to review it mm-hmm. just because, like you said, just so, so massive. Yeah, like outperforms Dune. Mm-hmm. I everything. and that is mm-hmm. of course Cocaine Bear. Yeah, naturally. Yes. So uh, what? Anthony, if you can, if it's like, if you're able to comprehend it, can you please tell us what Cocaine Bear is about? Of course. About? Um, so there are, uh, it is a serious mob drama about <laughs> these okay. uh, drug dealers going in the wor- woods or actually flying a plane, yes. trying to do a drug deal, and then s- some of the cocaine falls out. Oh, no. Oh, no. And what what happens with it? It, it lands in a forest. Okay. And a bear <laughs> ingests it yes and gets coked up and uh-huh. goes on a murder rampage yeah um the b- most wonderful part is that this is based on a true story in kentucky isn't it kentucky that's awesome that's so awesome oh i love li- i well i well well i think it was like in okay. illinois but it's like it's a kentucky bear or something it's mm. the bear is in kentucky like okay. it's stuffed you can go to a museum right now in kentucky and go see the cocaine bear there's a cocaine bear museum Maybe I don't it know. It better be the Cocaine Bear Museum. <laughs> they put a, like a gold chain over him and stuff, and oh like gosh. try to di- like do him up with it. Interesting. Um, yeah, but this movie looks yeah. insane. It does. Um, and Adequately I, for I cannot wait for it. Yeah, <laughs> it I think this great. is gonna be like. Well, we'll see how it grows. Um, because right now I don't think the following is too big. But there's very there's very much a community based around this film right now that is yes. building as it comes up to its release. Do you think it'll be able to go like a full hour and a half, hour forty of just a bear <laughs> being high on cocaine? No, and that's yeah. what I'm worried about. I I can see it more as a short film, especially but, with this trailer, mm-hmm. like a funnier die skit. But this is like. Man, I don't know. I hope you can keep me in that full length mm-hmm. time. But I'm I'm a little worried about that. Well, the trailer looks like it's pro- the the story isn't as much about the cocaine bear as it is about a family surviving a cocaine bear. Yeah. Oh, that's and lame. It says it's in Georgia in the movie. I haven't fact checked it, but if that's if the or like if the if the Kentucky thing is true, I feel disrespected. I do too. Um, but I feel like if they lean into this being like a stupid family slasher drama then we're not going to have a good time. Oh, I don't think that at this, all. I think it's just... Well, it looks like... I think they're going to play into the comedy of it. Yeah. But still, I don't care about the family. I want to see the bear. Show That's me fair. the bear. Show me the bear doing cocaine I think stuff. we're going to get a lot of the bear. I We better. Yeah, this is also Ray Liotta's last role. 
Uh, rest in peace. <laughs> Dang, yeah. Yeah. He he was really excited for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be ninety one minutes, so just okay. barely being full length. So that's that's that's, that's a, good. That's a good length yeah. of a movie. At um yeah, Avatar, it's coming out uh, February twenty fourth. Uh, uh looking forward to that one. I am too. I think I think that'll be an interesting addition to the lineup of Hollywood. It will be too. Okay. Yeah. Um that is all our trailers. Yeah. Uh, before we move into yes. the main topic, I have a movie I watched. It's this little movie called The Fablements. Steven Spielberg's yeah. semi autobiographical movie. Yes. I love this movie. Mm-hmm. Um this movie is amazing. Mm-hmm. I, it, if you have a passion for anything, mm-hmm. like it really anything, but especially for someone like you and me who have had like passions for like film and yeah. stuff, this is going to speak to you. Mm-hmm. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's basically about Steven Spielberg's childhood growing up in New Jersey to Phoenix to um, LA and all the stuff that happens with it um, from him wanting to be a filmmaker and making these films to the drama in his family life to um, him being in school, especially during, I think, like the 1950s, 60s mm-hmm. is when it's set, and being Jewish and what that means during that time. Mm-hmm. And this movie nails it in every single aspect it goes to. I don't know if it'll, like, speak to everybody, um, mm-hmm. like... In the way it spoke to me, but I like I didn't cry during it mainly because I had such a massive headache. So I was yeah. just like, man, I want to go, but I want to keep watching this. Right. But every time I think back to it, like tears start to form because yeah. it's so good. Especially there's some moments towards the end with like you see the effects on his filmmaking on other people, mm-hmm. and like a scene with a bully at the end that is so good. Um. I don't want to say anything about this movie, but uh, the performances are out of the park, um, mm-hmm. like great. Um, the score, John Williams, is yeah. coming back. His last collaboration with Spielberg. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, I can't think of anything bad about this movie. Mm-hmm. I I give it a hundred out of a hundred. Gotcha. On Letterbox, I give yeah. it a five out of five. Um, this yeah, I love this movie. Of course, if I keep thinking about it, because it's been a week since I saw it, so I forget some things, right. my score might be lower. Mm-hmm. But even if it is, it'd be like a 95. Like, gotcha. it wouldn't go that low. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I want to see it. Yeah, go go watch it. It um, is so good. I'll probably have to wait until I can find it somewhere streaming. But probably, I'm comfortable yeah. with that. Because for some reason, it was only in theaters for a week. Yeah. And had super limited show times, too, mm-hmm. which I don't like. Universal, uh, fix your stuff. It's Steven Spielberg we're talking about. Yeah. Fix it. It's not Indiana Jones, though, or Star Wars, or Lord of the Rings, or like but any other big he franchise. He made so Indiana a... Jones, and he helped with Star Wars. No, but this isn't about Indiana Jones. Who's in it? Steven Paul Spielberg. Dano, <laughs> the Riddler, uh, the the Riddler yeah. from the ba- I don't know, uh, but anyways, I do agree there should be more Donkey Kong for is it. in it. I think Seth Rogen. I think things like that where it's like we have a sent like at least a semi original film if it's not just like a bi- biopic kind of deal, uh, those are getting lesser and lesser now. Yeah, because all we see is Disenchanted and like another Toy Story and yeah like. And this is such an original movie, too. Mm-hmm. And, like, there are some moments of, like, melodrama yeah. in it that, like, I've heard people, like, criticize about it. But for me, it worked, be- especially because it was based on his real life. That right. it's like, okay, this stuff actually happened. But also the melodrama in it felt true to the story, and it felt needed to show, like, the main character's progression mm-hmm. as he grows into a young filmmaker and just a young man. Right. Um, yeah, definitely go see it. I think there are still some show times in, like, a few, like, independent theaters around here. Mm-hmm. So if, if there's show times around you, go see it. But mm-hmm. if not, you'll probably have to wait maybe a few weeks, a few months to see it. Yeah. But it's definitely worth a watch. Okay. Well, Anthony. Yes. What, I think I already asked this earlier, but I'm going to ask it again. What is our main topic today? What are we, why don't you introduce our main movie? Yes. Um, so we start off 
focusing on this sweet deer family. Mm-hmm. Um, they they have some marital problems, the two parents, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. They're just coming together to spend Christmas together. Yeah, of course. And it's it's just this little sweet Christmas movie about the wonder of family. Of course. And of course, um, that is the David Harbor Santa movie yes. where he kills people in gory fashion, violent yeah. night. Uh, we're talking John Wick, rated R, Santa Claus. Yeah. I would say more Die Hard than John Wick. That's fair. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll agree with that. Uh, there's a lot. There's definitely yeah. There's definitely a lot more like just brutality in this one because that's yes definitely what they're going for. Uh, and I think they accomplish that mm-hmm. pretty well. I agree. I'd say that because the only way this movie works. Is if they play into the absurdness of it. Yes, and they absolutely yes. do. Um, David Harbour, who we said is Santa in this movie, mm-hmm. he's a great Santa. Yeah. Not only like with you, like you believe him in like the like you said the zaniness of it all mm-hmm. and how crazy it is, and he is like good at being like an action movie star, mm-hmm. but you also buy him as Santa. Like he he's when you see him at the start of the movie, he's disillusioned from the idea of Christmas. He's Mm -hmm. like, oh, all everyone wants is cash and video games. There's no real Christmas magic left in the world. Mm -hmm. And you see, like, as the movie goes on, he's like, oh, no, like he actually cares about these kids and stuff. He's actually Santa. Yeah. He's just disillusioned by it all. Mm -hmm. I love that. It was um, it not only made for like good character progression yeah, i guess yeah, character progression but for santa mainly it, it was just funny to see him be this disillusioned yeah. guy especially at the beginning mm-hmm. um when like he's at a bar right um i thought that was a really good scene that was that was a very clever way of introducing it was uh our santa uh along with like because at the bar there's another like like a mall santa uh and they just have a fun conversation and with these type of movies, you have to be cheesy, and they do it pretty well. But they're you like, do. there's a lot of one-liners, there's a lot of like Christmas puns. Well, I, and jokes. I don't think you have to be cheesy, but this mm-hmm. this is cheesy. Um, yeah, yeah. I guess if you want to go into that, um, my biggest criticisms in this movie is the writing. Yeah. Um, I said lots of bad bad dialogue. Mm-hmm. Um, just all throughout, some of the characters were just lame, like one note, mm-hmm. or not even some. Mostly all of them. I think the way I interpreted interpreted this movie though was that it was a parody of I like, can see that of feel good Christmas stories. Yeah, and so that bad writing, if it wasn't intentional, then that's rough. But I think it was very intentional to have those like very stereotypical and cliche like oh the like. Like Santa, I want mom and dad to make up for Christmas. Oh yeah, um, like that. that I, I that was kind of thing. fine with because it did feel like a parody. It just mm-hmm. all, all the writing just didn't work. To, mm-hmm. um, I guess like the actual plot of the yeah. movie is like we said, it is this family who the parents are having marital problems, and they go to the dad's like rich family's mansion for Christmas, mm-hmm. and you get the uh those parents and their daughter who's like still highly believes in Santa. Mm-hmm. And then you get his sister and her, I guess, boyfriend. Yeah. Th- and their son, who's also a brat. It's kind of like knives out like that family <laughs> with yeah. the son who's like always on social media and stuff. Yeah. And then the matriarch of it all, the mom who's right. played by Beverly D'Angelo. Yeah. Um, who I don't know for some reason I did not know until I saw the credits. I was like, Oh, that's Beverly D'Angelo mm-hmm. who is also this awful person. Yeah. And it's a, like, they're all fighting for, to get her attention. But then the dad's like, you know what? I'm done trying to fight for attention. Mm-hmm. And then that night, a bunch of just burglars come in yeah. to try to steal the family fortune. Mm-hmm. And then, Little do they know, Santa's yeah. there at the exact same time delivering presents. And mm-hmm. don't mess with Santa and his delivery system. True, uh, I think it was, I think it's a really good concept for a film. It is. Um, and on that note, I think they are like like I said before. I think they pull it off pretty well. There's like, I'd say the movie is good. I gave it a three out of five stars on Letterbox. Um, there's definitely like 
there's room for improvement, but it's hard oh, to do sure. that because it's this is kind of what it has like I think it fits well in what it's trying to do. Yeah, it's there's, like there's so many problems with it, mm-hmm. but it does the main thing that you want it to do. Yeah. And because of that, you enjoy it and mm-hmm. you have a good time watching it. The thing I was going into this movie for was like Santa being absolutely brutal um, and completely like skewing that vision that everybody has of Santa. Uh, and that's what I got of it. Yeah, Santa is intense in this movie. Yeah. They're. The fights in this, for one, I love how it's not just Santa is invincible yeah, and definitely. he is going to win every fight no matter what. Mm-hmm. He gets beaten up through this movie. He goes through the ringer. Yeah. And I, I love that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. But even when he does get the upper hand, hand and even when he doesn't, it's so brutal mm-hmm. in any way you can imagine it. Yeah. Um. You want Let's talk about the fights in okay. this. Um, one of the things I really love in it is that... Uh, when you have an action movie, I'm always worried about like how you not how are you not going to make this stale, right? Because if you just ha- keep having a fight and it's the same thing over and over again, it's going to get stale. Mm-hmm. And with this, with like every fight, they introduce like this new mechanic, yeah. Where uh, whether it's Santa's sack mm-hmm. or it's like his first fight and he's just trying to get the fight back in mm-hmm. him. Or another place where there's all these different kinds of weapons that he can use and mm. uses them all at once. Um, and, yeah, because of that, I thought all the fights were, like, super engaging and just well choreographed. Mm-hmm. But what did you think of the fights? Definitely. I, I think they had a really good variety. Uh, I think they maxed out how many, like, Christmas slash holiday slash winter related props they could. Yes. Um, but that variety, like, prevented it from being stale. There was a lot I, – I, I super-duper agree with what you were saying earlier with that Santa gets beat up and he l- does lose yeah. fights. Um, I also like on the flip side of that that like – or because this it's the whole team that is blur- burglaring uh, this house is pretty professional. It's led by John Leguizamo's character. Who's great in this. He, 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 he He's having really good such job. a good time. He does. And it, it just shows on screen. Um, he – as soon as he learns that like – one of his guys is down, he takes this guy seriously. Yeah. Um, he's like, we have a threat, and we need to, like, treat that threat. Uh, now, as to the validity of how well that threat is treated, those are the fights that we're talking about. But I think that was I think it was refreshing to see a villain not be like, oh, just like, or he, him sent off two goons to be like, go, go take yeah. care of this, like, joke. He's like, no, we got to take this guy out yeah. because he's getting in the way of my money. Exactly. Um, and so John Leguizamo did a really good job of both balancing, like, being intimidating and serious, being funny. Yeah. Uh, and then just being a good action antagonist. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. Super I, solid. Yeah. Um, another thing I love about the action mm-hmm. is almost the movie's insistence on not using guns. Yeah. Um. Obviously, there are guns in the movie, but whenever there is a fight, mm-hmm. in some way, shape, or form, the guns are not used, mm-hmm. and so the fights are more hand to hand, or they're used with like weapons, and so because of that, it's a lot more personal. I'm I'm a big fan of doing like hand to hand fights in action movies rather than guns, mm-hmm. because when you have a gun, you're just far away from each other and you just shoot and. Right. Like I said before, it it can become stale if you don't up the stakes in some way. Right. And so in this one, they almost never use a gun in a fight, and it it works so well with the action scenes. Mm-hmm. Uh, something I want to move on, or probably my biggest gripe with this movie, yeah. is the main pl- or the main plot is the family. I yeah. don't like them. <laughs> Are you talking about like, the main main family, or like, or... or just the family, like the knives out as a whole? Okay. Um, because I I don't care. Um, and I was kind of trying to defend this point earlier, but I'm going to backtrack on it with the like, I like in any movie you need somebody to root for, and in this I you care have about the daughter. You ha- you have Santa and you have the daughter. The rest of the family are are not made out to be like good people. Yeah. Um, especially the extended family. The parents aren't, like, they have their own troubles going on, and that's, like, the whole stereotypical, I, I want mom and dad to get back together. Yeah, and even that, like, because of the writing, you don't really care about. Right. Um, The daughter's name is Trudy. Trudy, yeah, it's Gertrude. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> we call Bertrude. her Gertrude. <laughs> Bertrude. I love that joke. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's so weird. It, um, it's a dumb joke, but it made me laugh. There's a lot of, like, some of the moments later in the film, because they try to take the family seriously for a little bit, and then at a certain point, it just turns into gags. Mm-hmm. Um, where it's like the like at a certain point the family members start just being like kill him first, and it's like killing like just, and they all just turn on each other like kind of knives out style but yeah. not convincingly. I mean, that they don't, I feel like they don't have a reason to me to. because it was like oh they're all just vapid and stuff. Uh huh. And it, it it didn't feel real. But I I do real? agree with you. They like with Fablemans there there was melodrama melodrama in this movie, mm-hmm. but for this it just didn't work because like you said you don't feel attached to the characters right and if something happens to them or if there's like a big reveal about one of the characters it's like okay i don't really care give me santa Mm -hmm. exactly i i feel like they could have upped the amount of santa we got a little more uh and down honestly one of the main thoughts that i had while watching this movie was that it could be a short film i I was Um, thinking that i I think it could be cut by like 15 minutes mm -hmm. just um, even with like the family stuff, mm-hmm. or if they, because at one point they just bring in a whole slew of like new bad guys, and it was fun, but like you didn't really need that, right? I think this like this story, for what for what I wanted out of this, they could accomplish that in a much less substantial amount of time. Yeah, uh, like give me like two or three Santa fights, establish quickly that it's a rich family who's getting getting robbed. And move on, because uh, yeah. you have like this movie. Or sorry, you can keep no, going. You, you, I was just gonna say it's it's an hour and fifty two minutes. Uh-huh. It didn't need to be that long. Absolutely, uh, it was like a lot of the th- like scenes were just like dragged on for a very long time, yeah. uh, and like you said earlier, give me Santa. I just wanna I want to go back to this like the absurd action. I don't care about the actual like. I've not been given the the materials to care about the family. Yeah. So when you give me these scenes of like somebody being tortured, I don't care. They don't. They aren't a good person. Like, kill him too. I don't care. Yeah, it's like just, just do it. And even the henchmen. Yeah. They were really cringy. Yeah. Um. I there's a like I think three of them specifically. Two of them were like, oh my god, it's a real Santa. Right. And they just go overboard with it. And the henchmen, the main henchman who's watching the family, mm-hmm. they all were just overdoing it so much no. that it it just threw me out of the movie, and I just wanted them gone. Right. They leaned from being, like, or from playing with the idea of, like, a parody to being, like, full parody. Yeah. Where it's like, here's, here's a bunch of jokes. Here's just, like, a bunch okay, don't – it takes away the legitimacy of it. And especially for an action film, you kind of you need an like an like a small ember of legitimacy, yeah. so that when somebody is threatening, like anybody from the main family or something, I need to I need to be able to care about yeah. this family. I need to be able to care about like the repercussions of this guy about to torture one of them. Yeah, and even with like the parody aspects, I do think a lot of the jokes do work. It's just a lot of the jokes involving maybe some of the henchmen, mm-hmm. like their line specifically. Um, but I do think with it being a parody, it, it does work. I laughed a lot during this movie, mm-hmm. especially during the action scenes with yeah. like the humor that comes up from it. Yeah. Uh, do you know who wrote this movie, Austin? Uh, I don't think so. It is Pat Casey and Josh Miller, most notably known for writing the first two Sonic the Hedgehog movies. Really? Yeah. Excuse me? Yeah. Like the like do the, the one the live action sense? Sonic? Yes. Okay. That does make sense. <laughs> what Seasons on earth? Beatings. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. Fascinating. No, I didn't know that, Anthony. You um, did. Or I didn't. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. I that's that do, that makes sense. That absolutely <laughs> that clicks for a it lot does. of things. Uh. What on earth are they doing over here in a rated R like uh, Santa film? But hey, it worked. Get a rated R Sonic film where yeah. it's like, it's like A Train from the Boys. Um, <laughs> but, anyways, huh? No, that that makes yeah. sense. Uh, um, another one of the things mm-hmm. that really bothered me with this movie. Yeah, I think especially in the first half, but I I'm not sure about the second half. I think just because I got desensitized to it, mm-hmm. is the score. Yeah, um, no, I, that's fair. The the score in this is super overwhelming mm-hmm. and over the top 
to where it makes things super obvious. Yes. Where like if there's something suspenseful, it's like, Duh! and you don't yeah. you don't need that. Like mm-hmm. we know it's going to be suspenseful. Yeah. It just overdoes. Like, hey, this is what you're supposed to th- feel right now. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna like bash this into your mind that this is what you're supposed to feel. Right. And it it took away from a lot of the stuff at the beginning for me. Mm-hmm. Um, especially like some of the fights where I was like, I get it. Like I'm getting too distracted from this score mm-hmm. in order to do the fight. Um, yeah. What do you think about I the agree. score? I think it was like, it felt overproduced. It felt childish. It did. Yeah. Um, and even if like, that's likely what they were going for where they were, they were trying to pair like parody that like feel good Christmas children's movie with the the music but it was just that the like, weird thing there wasn't is, anything they changed about the music the composer of this um he also did like the kingsman movies okay and i thought the score in those movies yeah. were good and like they weren't like overproduced or overpronounced or anything mm-hmm. so it, it was just very weird just seeing that dichotomy right i would have loved to see any of the action films in here with like the uh i think it's Mick Gordon, I might be saying that wrong. The guy who does Doom, uh, like the, oh, the yeah. super duper that heavy would be really metal. Cool. Um, that like, or because there's like, oh, they they just played with a lot of the public domain Christmas songs. Yeah. Uh, then they kind of warped them into like more intense, but they didn't go all the way with it, and it felt like it was still just Christmas music over this like super intense fight scene, and it. It 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 didn't complement the action whatsoever. Yeah, uh, and it made it felt it took away more of that legitimacy I was talking about earlier, where it just kind of fell flat. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's like this feels this is too jolly for what is going on right yeah. now. Yeah, I I have the big question for you, okay. Austin. Yeah, do you think this is something you would watch for the Christmas season, like going on? I think it'd be really funny too. I think it'd be funny I to think take it, it to like too. a family gathering with like little children and be like, "Let's watch a Santa movie." <laughs> Maybe not with little children. <laughs> I guess. Um, um, no, but imagine no. Okay, rated R. You shouldn't do that. But, but. it'd be funny. <laughs> uh, no, but it it does. It has holiday spirit. Yeah. It absolutely it, has. Oh, holiday it, spirit. it does have holiday spirit, along with a lot of blessing, a blood and yeah. guts. But. I don't know. I I I think it's a good. It's a good addition to what right now is like. I don't think we've had, like, a solid Christmas movie added to, like, the classics mm-hmm. in a long time. Uh, Austin, go watch Spirited. No. Yes. I'm I'm super busy it's that day. It's a good movie. I don't, I don't should care. Go watch I'm not it. watching another Will Ferrell Christmas movie. I'm not doing it. <laughs> but I'm, Ryan I'm, Reynolds is also in it. I'm not watching another Ryan Reynolds movie. If from, I the writer, from the songwriters of The Greatest Showman. I've never seen that. Yes, you have. Or no, you I haven't. haven't? I haven't you seen ha- it. You listen to the music, though. I just know a little bit of the music. I know the vibe of the music. Dear Van Hansen. Lao Lao Crocodile. Lao Lao Crocodile is phenomenal and much better than anything we've talked about on the show up to this point. <laughs> um, besides maybe Clifford. But that like I'm waiting for the crossover movie to kind of decide <laughs> who wins that. Oh, my God. What? Nothing, nothing. I still need um, to watch the Blues Clues movie. It has great yeah, reviews. it came out. I completely forgot about it. It has about great it. reviews. Because we, we talked about reviewing yeah. that, and I was like, oh, oh yeah, maybe passed. we should. And then I found out it already came out like two weeks afterwards. I was like, dang. I genuinely want to watch that so bad. It, it, it's gotten great reviews, I've heard. Yeah, okay. So I will probably I might I might do a bite about that if I ever get a chance yeah. to watch it. Maybe it'll end up on your top ten best of the year. <laughs> it, it very well yeah. might. Lyle's probably gonna be on there. Um, if it is, I will be so mad. Deal with it. Maybe, maybe I just have better movie. taste than you. It's not a good movie. It's pretty good. Or no, I I think I. Lyle's okay, it's an all right movie. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank I, you. I, I respect gave it, it. I think I gave it a positive review, didn't I? I think it was, I, like, right in the middle. I think so. I liked it more. <laughs> you did like it a lot more. I enjoyed it. If but I was a just, kid, I would have loved that stuff. You act like it's a masterpiece, and it's not. Well, I think it's funny to act like it's a masterpiece. <laughs> anyway, Violet Night, it's a good movie. Uh-huh. Um, I, I guess we're done talking about Violet Night. Well, we can go ahead and go into spoilers you have if you other, want. Uh, do you have anything there's, else to say about it? There's stuff about the end that I want to talk about. Okay. Um, Let's do Round Tomatoes. Well, final, final thoughts. Yeah. I thought this was a good movie. Mm-hmm. I really want a sequel. I can see this being a franchise. I no, this is. I'd be scared of them running out of ideas. I guess this is my pitch. Mm-hmm. There's intruders at the North Pole. Okay. All the elves, their elves are they're scared. They're gone. Uh huh. But it's 
Santa and Mrs. Claus yeah. teaming up to fight the baddies. Who plays Mrs. Claus? Um, We well, see in the Christmas Chronicles 2, <laughs> Santa Claus is played okay. by Kurt Russell's wife. Uh-huh. And Kurt Russell plays Santa Claus. Gotcha. So I guess you, you, you got to do the same thing. You got David you Harbors. Got David Harbors. I don't know if he's Does, married, but yeah. girlfriend at the time, something. I'm thinking, or... I'm thinking we get uh, the lady from Cats um, who played the... the oh, Rebel God. Wilson? No, not Rebel Wilson. Uh, da, 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 da. I can only think... It's like Judy Dench, I oh, think. He, he, he um, is married. He is married? Uh, Lily Allen. Does she act? She is best known for being in the film Elizabeth as Lady in Waiting. Okay. She does without a lot of soundtrack work. Yeah. Well. Uh. Well. You, I'll let you talk to the producers about yeah. the the sequel but, to this then. No, but I I want mm-hmm. Mrs. Claus in this. It might work. I think they'd have. Well, I think North Pole would be a good setting for it. But yeah. It'd be I like, I think that would be super cool. Like you're on my turf now. Right. They have like actual Home Alone track. I would. I'd love to see but the elves yeah, in it. There are some Home Alone references in this movie. Yeah. That. Yeah, no. absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, it's like this is what would happen if Home Alone was like in real right. life, <laughs> and it, it they, was. It honestly might be the best part of the movie. There's a um, do you know Corridor Digital? Yeah, they did a video. They did do that. Yeah, I watched they, it, and it was like, mm, this is like what they did. Um, we'll talk about that more in our spoilers section. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's do Randomados yeah. real quick. Uh, how do would you, you rate this movie? How would I rate this movie? Yes. On a hundred, I'd give this movie like a seventy-five, maybe 75. eighty. It was it was pretty good. Uh, I'd watch yeah. it again. If, I I would. I'm I, actually I'm right there with yeah. you. I'd give it like a seventy-five. I wouldn't watch it like by myself again, but if I had like a group of friends to watch, it, I think it'd be a good time. I honestly I thought about going to see it again, mm-hmm. um, like this past weekend. I I just didn't have time. Yeah. Okay. Um, Austin, what is the Rotten Tomato score for this movie? The critic score for Violent Night is 80%. 80%? Yes. Okay. What is the audience score? I'm going to say they're right around there. I don't think anybody, if anything, they might like it a little less. They might think it's too cheesy and doesn't land very well. Yeah. 76. Okay. 80 and 76. Awesome. Yeah. For Tomato Meter. Mm -hmm. You said... Mm -hmm. 80%. 80%. I did. The actual score with 138 reviews is 70%. Okay. You're just 10% off. That's fine. That's fine. The consensus is mm-hmm. Violent Night isn't as remember. wildly entertaining as its concept might suggest, but for those seeking harder edged holiday fare, it may be a ho ho whole lot of fun. I disagree. They, well, they kind of popped off with that. That, they they, they popped they, off with the end. Yeah. But I, I do think it, it can be uh, described as wildly entertaining. Yeah. I think there's too many flat moments yeah. in it. And I think that's probably what they're referring to. But the, the action, when it is happening, absolutely yeah. serves its purpose. But there, there is, is too just many, like, like, a cut of it. which was like, mm-hmm. okay, Vi and I with none of the family stuff in it. Here yeah. you go. It, 10 out of 10. Exactly. <laughs> um, Austin, for the audience score, you said 76%. With over 500 verified ratings, the actual score is 90%. 90? They loved this movie. Okay. Okay, Violent Night. Yeah. I did not think it was received as well as that. Yeah, it okay. um, it made, I think, like $13 million this past weekend. That's which is good. I mean, it's pretty good for its $20 million budget. So, yeah. If you haven't seen it, go see it. All right. Yeah. Are you ready for spoilers? Yeah, let's do spoilers. Yeah, spoilers. Five. And f- oh, right, oh, next uh, week. Next yeah, week. Yeah, right. Um, we said we might be reviewing the whale. We might be reviewing Pinocchio. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not reviewing anything next week. Yes. Um, it's the end of the year. It's December. Yeah. And with that, it's about to be a new year. Yeah. So, so we're, we are we're going doing? to do our top ten most anticipated movies of 2023. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did this in. Last year we had an episode similar to this. Yes. But it was like, I believe we did top 10, worst Best, 10, and. Worst and anticipated. Yeah. So we're going to split we, it up a little Yeah. Bit. We had to rush through the anticipated. So mm-hmm. we thought, hey, especially with finals week and everything, right. instead of watching a movie, let's talk about the movies that we are excited for mm-hmm. next year. 
And then, like we did last year, at the beginning of January, we'll have an episode for the top 10 best and worst right. of this year. Yeah. But, uh, but thank yeah. you very much. Uh, check you us can, out on... That's a wrap, NCR. On Instagram. Uh, and let's go ahead and start spoilers yes. for Final Night. Uh, so five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's well, go. Jason sucks. I don't care about Jason. Jason's yeah. the main dad. And there's like He's this ridiculous. big reveal He's about like, him. I, oh, was I, I took the money. the money. It was like, okay, like I, I don't care. Yeah, and like the the mom didn't care about it either. Yeah, the mom didn't care. She still got back yeah. together with him because he kind of helped killing that one guy. Yeah, I don't know. But it was, it was um, mainly her. That was stupid. The the actual ending, because Santa gets shot four times in the back. <laughs> I um, almost, I wanted to start clapping to be like, Tinkerbell, like, bring her back to life if you believe. You got to clap. It was just like the Christmas, like, I believe too. And I believe. And I believe. And he's like, oh. And he wakes yeah. up. I do like the recurring joke of, I don't know, it's Christmas magic. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like... The, the the final fight was actually really impressive. Yeah, I, I was worried about that, too, because, like I said with the action movies, it can get stale, and they, it's always the final fight where, mm-hmm. like, they stumble a bit. Yeah. I thought they did a really good job yeah. with this final fight, especially with John Leguizamo's, like, two, like, scythe yeah. like, weapons, mm-hmm. and how he kills him picks. with going up the chimney. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the ice picks. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was so good. It was... Mm-hmm. Gory and glorious. It was gory this Nice. Yeah. The good one. Uh, no, I agree. I think uh, it wrapped up the film well. Aaron, it wrapped up the action well. Yeah. Uh, it was a good uh, cherry on top. But in terms of like story, I wouldn't care if all of that family died except for Trudy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, keep, keep Trudy. Everything else was super rough. Um, I liked... I liked the contrast getting to see Santa interact like with the reindeer uh, and or just seeing Santa be actually jolly and not rated R Santa where he's like swearing and drinking. That was like a good contrast. I liked having yeah. both of those types of Santa in this because uh, him and being like, do a really good job with I, both I can't types stay of Santa. mad at you guys. Um, that was really good. Yeah. Um, I don't think I have any really like spoiler I'm things to, to f- say. Do you have any? There was one that I was thinking about earlier, but now I can't recall what that was going to be um there's oh the scene i was referencing earlier where it's jason's wife yeah the son and then the son's mom of like the other family yeah uh and they're like they all just like start bickering between each other and they're like kill him kill him it's like they should be i know it's a joke and i know it's a like a comedic movie, but this doesn't. Yeah, and feel... then they all come together yeah, to beat just... up that one guy, and, and he... it's like, oh, we are a family. Exactly. It, it, that didn't land well. I don't care about them. I don't care about the people who are intruding. The Home Alone scene where I he breaks his that. foot on the plank and the nail yeah. goes through his mouth. That shocked me. Yeah. I was like, I know this is going to happen because of that broken plank, but then it happened. Mm-hmm. It was so like visceral and stuff, and. That was the first good beat, and I'd say probably the only good beat of the rest of that sequence. I loved that sequence. It was the rest of it was all right, but I think they started so high, and then the rest, like the guy's just sitting on the ladder, like he's holding a nail up to his forehead, and it's like, I wonder what's going I know. to happen. I was like, okay, that's lame, but uh, it happened, and I still loved it. And also, those were the two villains that just are kind of dumb. Yeah, those They're, villains they were like the. That's I think I that's also why I loved that scene. Cause I'm like, mm-hmm. I hate you two so much. Well, they were the most like <laughs> Harry and Marv, like yeah. Santa, <laughs> Santa. I don't know it. Yeah, it was okay. It was yeah, but it was a good movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's I think that's, I that's really yeah. all I got. Yeah, like we said, tune in next week for the mm-hmm. most anticipated of 2023. Yeah, you can follow us at that's a wrap NCR. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. and so until next time, that's a wrap.